Hello and welcome to Rotterdam in the Netherlands for highlights of round two of the Super League Triathlon Arena Games with the Zwem Centrum playing host to the world's best athletes competing in a unique event, a mixture of real life and virtual racing. So let's see what our triathletes are facing today. You want to find out exactly how this is all going to work? Well, let me run through it with you. There's three stages. It's our triple mix. The first one starts with the swim and ends on the bike. The second stage starts with the run and ends on the swim. And the third stage starts with the bike and ends on the run. Now, you'll notice there that it's no longer a 4K bike. We're now moving to a 3K bike. So it's even quicker, even faster, even harder. Now, each of those stages are worth 10 points per stage. You win the stage, you pick up 10. Straight through to 10th, uh, 10th place, you get the one. You've got to accumulate points across the three stages and the winner or it takes the most points across the three stages will win the Super League Triathlon Arena Games. Let's run through them all right now from Italy, Alice Beto in the red, Anna Godoya, Sol Spaniard in the blue, Rani Scrabanja and Maya Kingma uh, are our two Dutch women alongside Rachel Klammer. Look out for Maya Kingma, she's very, very strong. Sophie Colwell, fantastic swimmer. She normally wears the blue of the fastest swimmer in Super League. She'll be in the white. The other uh, from Great Britain is Kate Woff, who's one of the great youngsters. Elisa Turch comes in from Germany. She is fantastic. She's been off the scene for a while. She went to university at Harvard, if you don't mind, then came back to triathlon. And Ilaria Zane, who's been around the traps in Super League for a while, is the second of our Italian women. And there's so much class all the way through that field. Here we go. On your marks. Nice even start. That's four laps of the pool here at the Zwem Centrum. And by this stage, we're already seeing Lucy Charles Barclay stretching out in the first one. But there is no Lucy Charles. Watch out for Sophie Colwell in the, in the white. white. And then hanging off her shoulder there in the purple is Maya Kingma as well. But a nice start throughout for all of our, our women here in the, the start of the arena games in Rotterdam. British tri swimmer Sophie Colwell in the white held an early lead in the 200 metre swim. Everyone's chasing Sophie Colwell and Ilaria Zane's gone to the top. Colwell was the first athlete to emerge out of the water and transitioned well onto the treadmill. Transitions really hurt Sophie Colwell last time. She actually spent less time on either bike run or swim than Beth Potter did in London three weeks ago. But Potter's transitions were so much faster, Oops. she ended up relegating Colwell. But she's on first on the run. And it's a beautiful day in the virtual world of Zwift. And in front is Sophie Colwell. And behind her, of course, they're all wearing the same colours as they're wearing in real life, is Beth Potter two seconds back. And despite the fact that Potter and Kingma got out roughly together out of the water, big gap between the two of them uh, when it comes to where we are now in the virtual world. Potter obviously running at 17.7 kilometres an hour. Kingma's about a kilometre slower, and she was a little bit slower as well in the transition. Beth Potter in pink had a strong run and pushed past her fellow Brit. Maybe if you're Colwell, you know you've got great bike power and you go, I'm going to get that extra point. I don't have to burn too many to beat Beth Potter. Now it's very, very critical to know when to exert your energy, how to do it as they transition off the run now, onto the bike. All right, Potter this is where Potter has been so good on transition. And onto the bike goes Colwell and you can see she's having a little bit of trouble Potter's with the shoes. The so, crucial time loss there for Sophie Colwell, and Beth Potter took full advantage to power through. Scrabanja, Turch, Godoy, King Wharf, and Beto, and add in Rachel Klammer to that mix as well. And across the line in just a minute is going to come Beth Potter, and she's going to finish just about 10 seconds ahead of the field, and she does it while up in the saddle. There you can see her in the pink. The full 10 points goes to Beth Potter and it's a Team GBR 1-2 with Sophie Colwell taking the nine, nearly 20 seconds back. King Mark Turch, Scrabanja, round out your top five. Can Beth Potter lay down a marker? She's got the run first. Can she get a little gap? Here we go for stage two. Little false start there from Potter for a second, but you can see how quickly she gets the cadence up, the turnover. And a great shot there of 10 of the fastest women in triathlon. And it's a 1K. Very, very relaxed, that high arm action. Beth Potter pushed the power at the front of the 1K sprint. It's really the cumulative effect as they go sort of backwards through the rollers. So the run is a backwards to the Sophie's bike. Sophie's gone past her. And yeah, How's Sophie that for a statement? Past Sophie Caldwell has just run past Beth Potter. And Sophie Colwell took control to win and exit the curved treadmill ahead in pole position. 
And already uh, two leaders who picked up 10 and 9 points. And there was a little collision there. Transition for Sophie yeah, Corwell, much boy. better than the first stage. And there's hardly anything between them. At the moment, it's 0.3 of a second between Colwell and Potter. Anna Godoy is right there as well. Spain's Anna Godoy in the blue, powered into the lead past the two Brits. And these three, we're going to see who is quick in transition when they're under pressure and the heart rates are high. Potter had the best transitions out of anyone quite easily. She's taken her feet, you can see there, out of the shoes already. And with 80, 70 metres to go now, she'll be off running around the pool and looking to get into the water. So in the bottom of your screen, you can see them coming across Sophie's the line. Off. Sophie came Godoy's across the off. line first. And it looks like Godoy's going to be into the water first. Sophie it's all was about slow getting in... that goggles and the cap yeah. on, though. Sophie was slow in London with getting that cap and goggles on. It cost her that swim. Her transitions in London were so tardy. She's rectified it this week, but this transition now, getting this swim cap on, very, Godoy, very important. very quick. Godoy first in again. She's in the water first. I think Sophie's slowed down. Oh, yeah, she, Sophie's yeah. dropped off five metres, but it looks pretty close between Potter. Maybe not five metres. But if anyone can make up that gap over 200, it's Sophie Colwell, and it's a straight swim shootout over four laps for the 10 points. Colwell held a slim lead by the 50-metre mark, but looked in full control over Beth Potter in the pink. There's going to be big movements as well at the end of this, because Colwell's going to pick up go to 19, and Potter's going to pick up the 19. But Kingma, who was in third and picked up eight, is currently ninth. So she's going to drop down the leaderboard significantly. There is Colwell who gets the win. Sophie Colwell takes the 10 from Beth Potter, Anna Godoy, Kate Woff and Lisa Turch are your top five. Sophie Colwell picks up the full 19. Beth Potter's got 19. Anna Godoy moves up to 13 points from Lisa Turch, who also had a good result there in equal third position. This is stage three. Bike, swim, run, and everything to play for, and some big, big numbers already being put out wattage-wise in the first part of this 3,000-metre bike. Potter up in the saddle once again. You could throw a tea towel over them at the moment, and I would expect it to be the same over the next kilometre because it's just so much easier to sit in. And Potter going off the front is actually expending significantly more energy yeah. than those behind it. Potter's lead was shut down with the race to the line. It's good to see Rachel Clammer on the front, up near the front. She's going to be very, very strong. I think she's going to position herself now for the next two disciplines, and we could see her really sneak into the mix. All right, we hit the cobblestones, which means we're at the end, and they're going to be hopping off the bike. There is the, uh, the banner at the end, and first off is going to be Maya Kingmer. It was now a race between Potter and Colwell for the Super League Triathlon Arena Games Rotterdam title with a swim and a run to go. Pump up the hill from Ilaria Zane and they are straight off and around the pool. Yeah, but we're seeing Sophie Coldwell again, her swim efficiency come into play, her strength in the water. As you fatigue as an athlete, it becomes more and more difficult to hold that technique in the water to keep your position. Not so for Sophie Coldwell. This is going to be a foot race between Beth Potter and Sophie Colwell. And obviously, you know, the, the transitions don't come into it as much because you're going from the swim onto the bike. You don't have to worry about your pedals or anything like swim that. Swim onto the run now. Uh, swim onto brought, the right. That's Sophie's what I meant. brought yep. that six-speed kick in. She's starting to cook away. She's had a quick glance back to see where Beth was. This transition for Sophie Corbell is key. She needs to get that treadmill up to speed. She showed she's in good run form. She outran Beth in that last stage. This is the run for a life. So in the final run in London three weeks ago, Potter ran eight seconds quicker than Coldwell. And it looks as though Colwell is a lot sharper this time around than she was then. She's only got 2.84 seconds in front. And there's a fight as well for third position. On to the treadmill for the 1K. The 1K shootout to decide who is going to be the champion. Now 4.7 seconds is the gap between Colwell and Potter with Kingma 6.1 seconds back from Colwell. An unbelievable run by Sophie Colwell. Absolutely unbelievable run. 50 metres to go and Sophie Colwell is going to steal it from Beth Potter. 29 points to 28. And Sophie Colwell is your champion. Well done, Sophie.
She looks like she has earned every minute of that. She looked like that after stage two. It hasn't gotten any better this time, but she has dug deep and she has won it. Good performance from her. Oh, just looking at the pain just makes me happy to be sitting here with some chocolate in front of me. Let's take a look now at the final standings and Sophie Colwell with a 9-10-10. Finishes second, first, first, as opposed to first, second, second to Beth Potter. Dominant, the two Brits. Anna Godoy picks up a third place in the second two stages. Clamour can be a little disappointed with that. Uh, she's normally very, very consistent, but she, uh, she wasn't quite there today. Instead, it was Colwell, Potter, and Godoy, and we're going to have our presentation in just a second. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy. I've not, not won a race for quite some time, so yeah, it's really nice to yeah, come out on top in what's been a odd 18 months. You had some pretty stiff competition, you really did. Um, but beating Beth Potter, wow. I mean, she's absolutely on fire, but you nailed the transitions. She still got me on transitions, that's for sure. She's so quick, so... Uh, I was just trying to gauge it in the swim because I knew that was really, really where I was going to make my time up. So I felt like I judged it a lot better. And yeah, it's just one race. So we've got a whole season to go. Let's just talk about that, that run as well. We know you're quick over the shorter distances, but to run a 3.0.12 in the, in, in the first kilometre, in the first stage, what does that mean to you to see that run improvement? Yeah, I've really been working on my run over the winter and it's been probably the longest I've been consistent, touch wood. Um, so it's just nice to kind of reap the rewards of that a bit and hopefully it'll pull me through the rest of the year. And for anyone who's not raised the arena <laughs> games, sum it up for us. <laughs> it's pretty hard. You don't have any time to think. You're trying to just like, yeah, get the part that you're doing and then think ahead, but you really don't have time. And then once the lactate hits, you're uh, in a world of pain. Massive congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go. Sophie Colwell does the job and she does it by virtue of being incredibly consistent.